Hi, I'm Professor Stephanie. And let's take a look at homework uh, assignment number 6A, Lobby with Desk. This is actually a handout that you can print out if you want. Uh, the may, there's a, some instructions that we'll review a little bit. And then also, it's got a photograph of the um, finishes that we're going to work with in this um, assignment. Uh, a couple of key things for me is that it has a really beautiful wood uh, uh, front, which we're going to render. It has chrome. Uh, this is, I'm going to think it's a tile. We're going to make it kind of using the same color flavor tile. We will make this a solid wall. There's some carpet and a couple other features that we'll work with. But this is a base for your color selection um, that you'll be making. So, the first thing that I want to prepare you for is, with your pencil, get your pencil and your T-square, because we're going to do some guidelines, and then I am uh, also pulled some markers I have ready to work with, which you'll, um, I'm sure you'll do when you get yourself ready. And the first thing I want to look at is both the wood grain, this wood grain right here. And I'm going to divide this rectangular shape in quarters vertically. We're going to do that with the X. And then I'm going to pay attention to the darker areas that are wood, the wood tone, to make a pattern. So I'm going to use this um, for a pattern. And in the past, I think we have did this in another class, the way I'm going to divide this is to create a division. I'm going to start corner to corner and this is typical of how I divide a box. It's going to give me the center both vertically and horizontally. And so I've got a line here vertically, a line here horizontally. Then I'm going to draw a box within the box to get the center here. So this gives me one to draw this again, three uh, vertical um, panels. Now the other thing you can do is to measure it. So, yeah, if measuring is more comfortable, that's good too. And I'm going to put in what I see are the shapes that are part of this wood grain flavor, okay, the grain itself. And that's, I'm going to make them darker. I'm going to use the same value that I see in there. This is a nice wood paneling. Okay, so I've set myself up here. I also want to divide this rectangular shape, and I'm going to measure it this time, and I'm going to use a, uh, my scale, my ruler, and it's going to be a quarter of an inch. I'm going to make some guide points right there, quarter of an inch. I'm going to take my T-square and create just a light vertical lines all the way down. It's going to be my guide for when I um, put the finish in there. The other thing that's, so there was one was the wood grain here, one is the uh, back wall, and then I'm going to take my eraser because the first thing that I'm going to draw in here or put in there is going to be the flower arrangement. <laughs> and we're going to do, you know, we're just going to put some leaves in there and some um, blooms. Uh, the reason I do that is because once I get started on this finish up here, I probably wouldn't remember that I needed to pause. So I'm going to just go ahead, erase where this flower arrangement is going to go. And I'm literally going to take my markers right now, first thing, and put in, I've got a green, one of the greens, and I'm going to imitate the what I see in the image, which are leaves on the bottom. Okay, this is just little leaves. We're getting better at doing flowers and plants. There seems to be a pink. Okay, I picked up one of our, my pink on the bottom of this 
and then it looks like the stalks, uh, flower stalks are yellow, so I'm going to add some yellow and have it go up to yellow. Notice I'm just putting some dots here. I'm actually going to make this all green here. And remember, I can overlap a little bit with my uh, markers. I push some of this red into, look at that, just make that a little bit darker. That red seems to be pretty strong right there. I might even put some red blooms in there since I feel like that's... I'm going to soften this, what I call softening this a little bit. Great. Okay. And I'm going to uh, also go ahead while I'm here, and it looks like I have a... I'm going to take my chrome... Uh, which is going to be uh, 089 and 025. I'm working with the spectrum markers. And I'm going to have the darker side be on the left. So I'm just going to put in a darker as if there's a, the light is shining from up here. There's the shadow. And then I'm going to push this color out that one on top of there and I might even leave a little a little bit of a white edge there so now I've got that done it's done <laughs> and um, that's uh, again I don't want to be rendering on top of that and I wanted that to be um, finished so with our wood grain I'm going to go ahead and take my large marker and uh, do some erasing I don't need all those guidelines, you know, that those triangle shapes, I don't need. And I'm actually going to erase some of my grain because I can see it. You know, that the, the pencil leaves a mark there, so I can still see it. And what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, is I'm going to think about the, uh, try to work in this darker area and then the medium and the light. And it looks like there's also a pretty strong uh, vertical line where each of the planks are on there. So with my wood grain, I've got a couple of different browns. Uh, this is a commercial setting, and so we're really staying in a lot of the neutral areas. So there's, you can see, I mean, that there's the selection is the chrome, the uh, cool grays. Uh, and most of the um, markers up in here. Sometimes commercial settings want uh, relatively neutral. Um, that's going to be uh, helpful as far as appealing to a broad range of people. So I'm going to start with my dark. And when I'm, I'm looking at that picture, I, I get a shape that looks like this. It's also a shape that is like this, and these are both repeated. So one of the things that's fun about marker rendering is, uh, for me, is creating these patterns that are part of existing. I'm gonna then come and do a lighter. This is gonna be 087 got more red to it and I don't mind notice I'm working uh, horizontally wood wood generally this is has a horizontal flavor I'm gonna put in there some of this color and I have one more I want to put in there and it's more of a, a yellowy and I'm gonna actually hit my corners and have this be over the whole. So this is like I'm putting in three layers here and creating a wood grain pattern. Great. All right, I'm going to pause on that and that's going to help me. I also want to make this top be this darker 80, uh, 
a darker 87 or 86. Where am I doing? 86. And notice we've got our. Remember, we've always got a vanishing point. This is a one-point perspective. Some of you will remember back and back. And I want to. Actually, I think I'll go vertically. I'm going to go vertically. That's going to be easier. So I'm going to make some vertical. It's going to be a solid surface vertically rather than going back to the vanishing point. I just made it a little easier for myself. I don't mind that. Great. Okay. So we've got our top and the, and the front, which works out great. Then the other um, pattern, which is a little bit more complicated, and I wanted to put some gray in there. I've got very similar uh, color flavor that I did here. It's going to be portrayed back here also. Uh, again, with a commercial setting, there's not a lot of contrast. So we're going to follow that lead there. Uh, and I'm going to use, uh, pull out a couple of the markers here that I want to use. 89, good. 36, and I did pop in some of that 25, which is the, our gray. Okay, and this is going to also be a vertical story back and forth. And this time, I want to make these small, uh, I'm using my flat, got my lines here, I'm going to double up here, kind of leaving some spaces, we've tried this before, this is basically going to be a pretty strong reddish brown. We're still in our brown family. Great. Good. Now I want to take my yellowy orange. So the wood grain was curved. This is rectilinear shape. So I have a, some contrast here. I could imagine this being vertical stones, maybe. Great. Then I have a third option, which is going to This is a much more dynamic. It's the most dynamic, what I would call a pattern, in the space. So I don't want any white space. And I also have the option to come back and get some darker value with the same marker. We've been doing that before. Notice I'm just taking my time. I'm losing some of the gold, which I don't mind. The gold seems to be sticking out. Very good. So this is a different look than this, and that was one of the goals for sure, was to have a different flavor. Notice, I, oh, oh, my flower arrangement, I had a little bit of trouble there with my marker. Um, the other wood grain I'd like to put is on top. And again, I'm going to go back to my pencil. This time, I want to make a V shape. Wood grain all, often has grain with a V shape. And then this, I'm going to make a little bit more curved. Now, that's a very typical wood green flavor. So I started about halfway. The V came to here and went back. I made another V line here. I could have one back here. This was curved from the corner up and around about halfway. 
I took it again down here. Great. And I'm going to use the same flavor that I used here. We're going to bring this up to there. And again, we're, we're getting, repeating our markers, uh, trying to get a little bit of a different uh, flavor uh, as far as shapes. So we're using our shapes and our line to do that. So I need 137, 136. And then 89. Great. Okay. So with my darkest, here comes the wood grain. Great. Just going to not have so much yellow, I don't think. I think that's going to be one of the things. So I'll just I think I'll keep this just two different. This red is really nice. And I'm going to go over it again because I can make it darker. Got to fill my corners in. I could also come back with the, the first marker. Good. Glad to leave the gold out. I think that's helpful. So this pattern is blending in a little bit. It's not quite as strong as the other ones and that's working out fine. Great. Okay. So those really are sort of the most of the pattern that we're going to have in this um, rendering. We work on the chrome a little bit. The chrome, I'm working with the grays, a, a 25 and an 89. And for me, this is going to be a vertical story. And we'll work with a little bit of a shadow from the right side. And so I'm going to put down and chromes oftentimes can have a, a line flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and use my marker. I'm going to overlap it, but I'm going to leave that line in there. I'm going to try real hard to touch that edge. Great. And I, that to me is imitating chrome very well. And I'm just going to try one thing here. I'm actually going to pause on the 89 because I'm going to make this darker with just the same marker. Yes, that's much better than my first suggestion, okay? So here's a little, and I would also have, this probably would be an overhang, so there would be a shadow underneath there. So with this single marker, one marker, so when you get ready to, to pull your gray, just use that one marker. Let's leave that just like that. So I'm going to make a note about changing that. Just We're not going to use that 89. And then I'm also going to make this super dark. This is going to be one of the darkest uh, values. And I'm going to use 91. Let's see if I can find that. Is it 91 or 98? Let's see, 91. Okay, I promised myself to have everything. Oh, right there. Good. Okay. So here comes this base. This is much uh, gray-browner than the other wood. Notice the contrast of that. That's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, very helpful. We're, we're using, you know, this is a very neutral story, but in that neutral, we want to have some color flavor. Great. Okay. And I can put a little bit of an edge there for a little dark. Um, this in the picture is also very dark. It's black. I'm a little shy about using black. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this same brown and I'll, I'll layer it a couple of times. Great. Because really, I don't want that to, you know, be like 
something that sticks out. Very good. Notice I'm using same same marker. I'm just putting more ink on there. And I, I like what's happening here with a little bit of that dark and light. Oops, got a little corner here. And it looks like I have a little corner there. Let me come back in here with. Great. Okay. Good. All right. So uh, to finish up, there's carpet and walls. And that's we're going to be fairly simple with that. Oh, and I've got to get something underneath here. And I think what I want to do is... Let's see what, how that works out. So the walls to me can just be a solid uh, vertical line. I was thinking of the, uh, the gray, maybe the gray that I didn't use. The, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a gray. And, and what really we're looking for here is vertical line. That's great. I'm going to also put it over here, keeping it simple. Great. Okay. And carpet. That's going to go back to, I think it's going to be this light, or let's see, or should it be dark? I think I want to put this brown underneath here, so let's do that. Let's see. Um, I've lost my I've lost my way here. This will be fine. A little bit more orangey, but that's okay. The carpet I'm going to actually use uh, uh, 78, which is a cream color. And what I want to try to do with the carpet, there, it's just not a lot of. Um, I'm actually going to use a little point. Is I think I have a chance to do some dots. Lots of. Um, little stippling dots here, different texture, making it seem like it has texture in it. I want to cover the white. Great. And I'm also going to make this the same back here. The baseboard can add a, a light brown. Let's see what I've got here. Kind of bring this wood tone back into here. And I'm going, I'm not sure what's going on here, but we are also going to. Great. Now, the picture, picture to me, I want to. I think we could bring just a little bit of green in there and maybe a little of that gold. I want this to be fairly neutral too. Great. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to make it all green. Look at that. Let's do that. Okay. So this will help you with practicing textures and pattern, keeping the color range very close. We didn't really go off the chart. Again, a commercial uh, interior will also often be that way. I'm also seeing that we probably want to have a flavor up top there, which I'm going to go to that very light gray, uh, 25. Let's do that. Great. Okay. That will finish it up. Thank you very much.